my new Parkrun PB video. This video was supposed to be my 2024 New Year's resolution video. I'm quickly running out of time in January to make that video. It is coming. The list has been collated and the script has been written for that video. But something happened at the weekend that meant I wanted to make this video instead. And if you follow me on Instagram, then you probably already know how this video ends. Training, run training, strength training, healthy weight loss especially, only works when you put in the work. Hundreds or even thousands thousands of hours working hard and learning from your own mistakes. Celebrating the wins and picking yourself back up to go again when things go wrong. That's how real change happens. That's not new information, a secret or particularly inspirational. That's just how change works. People say work smart, not hard. That's not true when it comes to real change. You can try and trick the system, but ultimately if you want the change to stick, then you have to be prepared to put in the graft. It's that simple. It's like learning to play the piano for the first time. You can learn chopsticks in under 30 minutes, just like your first 5K park run or your first race on Zwift. Learning chopsticks can be fun and you get a quick understanding of what playing the piano involves. But if you wanna play Tchaikovsky's concerto number one, then you need to put in the hours. Basically, if you wanna get good at something, then you've got to be prepared to train. I don't know if you can see me, you can probably see the sun rising in the background. So I'm an hour and a half early for park run. Um, two reasons I'm an hour and a half early. First reason is I want to get a warm up running. Second reason is because all of the trails and footpaths leading from where I live, which is about 8k away to here, are flooded. And I don't really fancy running my park run in trail trainers. Now I assume you get where I'm going with this. Making training fun is the key to longevity and success. Playing chopsticks is fun to play, even when you're trying to learn the basics. It gives you immediate gratification. Now, to have fun, you need to work out what's fun for you. I like to have a target to aim for because that's what makes it fun for me. I'm very competitive, mainly within myself. Adding in a currently unachievable fitness goal, target or challenge is what keeps me coming back to the smart bike, out on the trails running or hitting the gym. But I do recognise that you don't always need to have a target to smash or a time to beat. Some of my best runs, the ones I remember the most, were the ones where I just went out and ran for fun, with no times or targets to hit. Just running for the sake of running, where I lose the concept of time and I feel like I could run forever. These runs, or the way I feel when I run these runs, are why I run. That sentence had a lot of runs in it. <laughs> Targets and challenges are why I train, why I train to get fitter, lighter and stronger to be able to achieve these targets and challenges. I train to be a better runner. It's kind of the chicken and egg scenario when it comes to run training. I want to be a better runner so I can continue to enjoy my runs more. Now, as much as Swan Lake on the piano is beautiful to hear and is probably the aim for all budding pianists, there is also a place to be had for the chopsticks and the intro to EastEnders. Everyone starts somewhere. You find fun in the small things and enjoy playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star occasionally, as well as having ambitions to eventually play Swan Lake flawlessly. And they are not mutually exclusive. You can do both. You can have your cake and you can eat it. Have fun, immediate gratification while simultaneously aiming for the stars. Now next week, I'll be making and sharing my New Year's resolutions, fitness targets and challenges I will want to achieve by the end of this year. These resolutions will be my 2024 Nutcracker or 1812 Overture. But I also want to have fun and include small wins that I know will help me in my training along the way. Oh, it's so cold. It's so cold this morning. So I'm just gonna have myself a nice hour long warm up. Just a slow jog around the course. 
So one of the reasons I'm doing this is I'm still trying to set a decent new PB. It's gonna be one of my targets for this year is to break and beat my park run PB that I'm not gonna be able to beat for a while. However, my current park run PB is 29.59, so 29 minutes, 59 seconds. And I feel that I've got at least another minute on that, possibly even two. So I'm doing everything in my power to beat that today. I'm taking all the tactics I've learned from running that I know work to beat my time. The other reason I'm doing this is I'm treating this like a training run. So park runs are really, really good for um, max effort runs. And rather than go for a long, slow run today, I thought I'd do a decent hour long warm up run, followed by a max effort run, followed by an 8K run home. So all in all, I'm probably gonna be covering half marathon distance today with a nice max effort in the middle. So it kind of breaks it up. It's kind of like a really bad interval run. In two weeks, so two weeks tomorrow, I have my first marathon of 2024. I've signed myself up for a full marathon, but it's a trail marathon. Now I've never run a trail marathon. I've done ultra marathons that include trails. A lot of them include trails but I've never done marathon distance over trail. So this will be my first ever trail marathon, which I'm really looking forward to. Am I ready to run marathon distance? No, not at all. Have I trained for it? Absolutely not. Um, am I looking forward to it? 100% yes. I have become equally addicted to park runs, not because I need to hold my local park run route record, but because I want to hold my own personal park run record. Turning up at a park run on a Saturday morning, I know will make me competitive and that makes it fun for me. I can still go out and run 5K on my own with my Garmin watch on trails and roads around my house, but doing it on my own doesn't have the same buzz as running with 300 other park runners. <laughs> I've just checked the pace calculator on my phone. Um, I'm gonna go for a 28 minute time today. If I can get anywhere near 28 minutes, that'll be awesome. So obviously with my mentality of shoot for the stars, I might hit the moon. If I go for 28, I might hit 29, who knows? So 28 minutes is a 5.36 kilometer pace. That's what I need to stick to. So in the last two park runs I've done in the last two weeks, I've shot off the start line in a sub five minute pace. Like for the first three to 500 meters, I've basically sprinted it. which, you know, I do it for fun. I do this for fun and that's fun to sprint off of a start line and pretend that I'm keeping up with the front runners at least for a couple of meters. But I'm not gonna do that today. Reason for that is because Max is out my cardio before I've even done the first kilometer. So I'm gonna stick to 5.36, start line all the way to the end, hopefully, fingers crossed. Now this route I've chosen, Mark's Hall Estate Park Run is awesome. Um, however, it is quite muddy underfoot on some sections. Not all of it, most of it's bone dry. And it does have a very short but meaty hill, which I need to make sure I power up and not drop the pace. Other than that, it's relatively flat. It has a small incline, but obviously then you go back downhill and you can pick up the pace there. So that kind of makes up for it. Knowing that I'm running at my maximum capacity for 30 minutes gives me a buzz and pushing for a better time gives me something to aim for. It gives me a reason for being there. Over the past month, I've made two park run videos now. These are linked in the description if you wanna go and watch them. 
In them, I attempted to run for the first time in under 30 minutes. I actually turned up at the course with the intention of running a sub 30 minutes. Previous to this, I just turned up with the intention of running my best. Now in these videos, I run in three different park runs. I ran to achieve my sub 30 in December and I ran exactly 29 minutes and 59 seconds twice. One of the park runs I ran with my children, so they were slower. I achieved an official park run result of, are you ready for this? 29 minutes and 59 seconds. You couldn't get any closer. And my time was, drum roll, I couldn't believe it. It was again exactly 29 minutes and 59 seconds with my Garmin watch backing this up. I had run exactly the same sub 30 minute time I had set only a few weeks previous. I had run the exact same 29 minutes and 59 seconds twice in two separate park runs. Now I couldn't have run the exact same time twice in two separate park runs on purpose, even if I had planned it that way. I'd achieved my goal of a sub 30 minute park run, but only by one second and I'd done it twice. And if I'm honest, it was annoying me that my Garmin watch still had me over 30 minutes. It always takes me a second or two to press stop on my watch. So with my park run time being one second faster than my goal, my Garmin watch wasn't. So with this one second time in mind, I again took the day off work on Saturday just gone. So a few days ago now, as I'm making this video, I turned up at my local park run, which was the Marks Hall Estate Park Run in Essex, and I attempted to run this sub 30 minute park run target and put it to bed once and for all. Now I live, as I've mentioned already, 8K from the start line. My partner needs the car for work. So I normally run to the park run start line and use this run as a warm up. However, recently there's been a lot of rain and the footpaths around my home are all flooded or waterlogged. So Tracy dropped me very early nearby and I ran my warm up run on the park run route an hour and a half before everyone else arrived. So in the pitch dark in near freezing conditions, I went for a warm up run with the intentions of setting my first sub 30 park run PB on my Garmin watch as well as my park run. What we do for a park run PB. So that's my, that's my warm up done. That's 5K, <laughs> 5K warm up for a 5K run. So that'll do for me. I'm just gonna quickly jog down this hill. The cafe's open now. We've got about half an hour until the start of the park run. I'm gonna go and grab an Americano while everyone else arrives. And then I'm gonna make my way to the start line. So it is quarter to nine, I'm on my way to the start line. Even at 10, 15 minutes of not running, I am now frozen. Um, yeah, no coffee, cafe's not open. I'm sure I've seen that cafe open before. Anyway, on my way to the start line to smash out my park run PB. Let's do this. Even though I didn't get my caffeine fix from the cafe that is massively missing out on the trick with over 300 park runners turning up for a fun run in the cold, I joined the start line after running a 5K warm up run. Then they announced that the park run would be delayed. So I ran another two and a half K to keep warm while we all waited for the delayed start. Based on how well I did at the Colchester park run only a week previous, I decided to go for and set 28 minutes as my pacing target, which is a five minute, 36 second per kilometer pace. As normal, my tactic for the run was to stay disciplined for the first 2K, don't push too hard and stick to five minutes 36 pace. Leave the start line controlled, get a good pace and then stay strong. Going too hard too early will ruin my chances. So I needed to stay disciplined. I focused on the plan, stay disciplined. Don't overdo it, Ryan. That's what I kept saying to myself in my head while I waited for the starting shout. Having said all that, I stood on the start line right at the front as normal like I know what I'm doing, fake it till you make it, and I went for it. As soon as the marshal shouted three, two, one, go, I sprinted off the start line. All tactics and discipline completely went out the window. And I literally sprinted, and when I say sprinted, I mean I went for it for the first 500 meters. <laughs> for those first 500 meters, I was running a four minute, 20 second pace.
pace until my heart felt like it was going to explode. For nearly 400 meters, I was pacing the leading pack. I mean, these are like super fit 20 year olds who are running flat out. I always get drawn into the hype and I try really hard to keep up with the much faster runners. I don't regret it, I love it. Having fun with my training will always trump being disciplined. I don't know why, I'm, I'm never gonna be a professional runner, so my priority here is to have fun with my running as much as I can. There was a long, slow incline shortly after the start line and I powered into it, but I slowed, allowing for more disciplined runners than me to pass me chatting and having fun whilst I was panting because I'd sprinted like an escaped convict, contemplating his life choices. I was grateful to reach the top of the slow long climb and I had to look at my watch. My time had dropped from 4.20 to a far more realistic but significantly slower pace of 6.20. That's the hill. I'm now averaging a 6.20 pace. It's not where I want to be. I shot off that start line. But that hill's killed me and that's not even the worst hill. downhill and I had to get back to 536 and keep it there luckily for me there was a really nice downhill section that I could canter down through the mud and then around to the steep hill climb okay we've got the hill big hill steep hill I said at the start of this video that this course was flat. What I meant is that this course is a lot, and I mean a lot, flatter than the Colchester Castle one from last week. But there is a long, slow incline after the start that I have already mentioned that I had to climb twice and a short, very steep climb at the end of the first lap that I only have to climb once because they deviate for the finish line. <laughs> I powered up the hill, I got to the top and I powered on. I knew that I didn't have time to slow. I was now at the halfway point and really, really needed to push on. I didn't look at my watch. I got back to the top of the long slope around the bend. I keep saying hill. I mean, it's a slope, but it's uphill and it's destroyed my pace. <sighs> and I started cantering back down the other side. It was then that I realized I was on for a decent sub 30 minute time. This gave me a spring in my step and I tried as best I could without my heart exploding to sprint the last 400 meters. 500 meters. 500. A lady that had paced me for the last kilometre and who had unwittingly helped me started to race me to the finish line. She picked up the pace. I managed to get ahead of her, but just like in Zwift, I went far too early to hold my pace and then she picked me to the finish line. <laughs>
like to thank her for the sprint. I appreciated that sprint finish. It's great to see people go for it. Well done, great sprint. Good job. Anyway, I finished the run, got my barcode and scanned my time through. Morning, morning. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much. Get off this muddy grass. Started to rain now, and now I have a 8k run home. Oh, I'm already 12k. Jesus, I got an 8k run home. Anyway, two things. Firstly, I just had my max heart rate increase to 191 BPM. Warning flash up on my watch, not warning, but to tell me that my max heart rate has just increased so I can now run with a heart rate of 191 BPM, which I've never ever done before. Um, so that's the first thing, it just come up on my watch. It came up so quick, I was gonna film it, but I didn't get the camera out in time. Second thing, I have just run a park run PB. So I called into my watch, I just ran a my Garmin watch really excitingly had shown me that I had run a sub 30 minute time, but I needed to wait for the official park run email for my official time. My official park run email then came through and I had run a, drum roll please, I had run a 29 minute 35 second park run. This was phenomenal. Now this is my third official park run sub 30 minute time, but most importantly, most importantly, it is a confident sub 30 minute time. It's not just one second. I am absolutely over the moon with this. I will 100% take this time. It's confidently below 30 minutes and now it's a time I can use as my base for this year as I go into setting my new 2024 New Year's targets and challenges. One of which will very much be my new Park Run 5K PB target, definitely coming in next week's video. I had a blast going for this target. It's been a target I've been desperate to achieve for the whole of last year. So over a year now, I've been trying to go for this. My park run PB going into December was slightly over 32 minutes and 33 seconds. I have now managed to shave almost exactly three minutes from my previous best time and no more beating the 30 minute mark by only one second. I have now achieved a sub 30 minute park run by a whopping 25 seconds and I'm over the moon with this achievement and I can now confidently say that I can play chopsticks. I can actually play chopsticks on the piano. It's the only thing I can play. Thank you for watching this video. See you next week as I lay out my ambitions for Tchaikovsky's. See you next week as I lay out my ambitions for Tchaikovsky's. Thank you for watching this video. See you. Thank you for watching this video. See you next week as I lay out my ambitions for Tchaikovsky's concerto number one. Basically, I'm going to set out my New Year's resolutions for running and swifting. Oh my God, this is what I'm dealing with. Uh, okay, so this park run was a really bad idea. Um, the euphoria of smashing my park run PB has been replaced with the realization that this here is the footpath. I've got to go up there, basically. And this here is a river that's not supposed to be a river. This is a footpath. <laughs>